Good afternoon, everyone. To our Honorable Mayor, Honorable Frederick Michel, represented here by Jennifer Lindsay. Our partners, supporters, benefactors, providers who are here present in us today. Thank you very much. To our community allies, teachers, instructors, congratulations on your appointment. And to my brand new Deputy Legal City family, Mayong Hapon Kanilita. The Department of Education has been putting in three important priorities on the agenda. The first agenda is expanding access to education. And we know very well that that's a big challenge. Being the biggest bureaucracy in the Philippines, in the government, it's very hard to be implementing a complete accessible educational system in the country because of, of course, funding. So that's the biggest challenge, providing access to education, especially to our non-formal education learners, because we've been dealing with, with formal education for decades, no, over the last decades. In the recent decades, there's an awakening. There's an awakening that is important, that is important to make more inclusive to different types of learners, no matter what their inclusivities are, what their deficiencies are, or what their circumstances are given an opportunity to access education. So I'm very happy that for providing and expanding access to education, our local government, our city government of Ilita, is addressing that market to one challenge. And I would like to thank our Honorable Mayor, Frederick Shaw, and the City Council, the Vice Mayor, including the local school board, with our Chief Mayor, Jennifer Lindsay, for providing opportunities for our learners with different exceptionalities and circumstances to have access to education, equal access to education, that is for the longest time enjoyed by our learners in the formal education system. A while ago, I met our BJMP officers, and they said that from 2015, they have been implementing alternative learning system for persons deprived of liberty. That's the term given to our students who are in the four corners of the prison cells. And they cannot access education because of the circumstances that they acquire in life. So victims of circumstances. We also have our indigenous peoples who are there in the isolated areas in our uh, in the outskirts of the city who are deprived of that access to education. Of course, our out-of-school youth and out-of-school adults and persons with disabilities or our differently abled learners. So with that, it's more accessible now. Not just accessible to our regular learners, but accessible to everyone making our education system and delivery inclusive. Ito na, para sa bala. Para sa bala. No matter what their circumstances are. The second agenda, priority sector agenda, is improving quality and relevance of education. And, well, education will not be real fun. It will just be teaching the core subject areas. If our education, just like in the past, would remain to be monolithic and focusing only on the academics, to make it relevant, it should be something that will provide them entrepreneurial skill and will provide them opportunities to access the world of work. 
That is why I would like to thank our partners and we call them uh, providers of our multidisciplinary educational delivery approach in the Department of Education Arts. We have Anita Cipriano of Christian Horizon President, uh, Christian President. Joseph Nathan J. Papika, our donor representative here for providing us the technical skills. The Princess Karima Mote Makapantao, our youth development uh, coordinator. Thank you very much for giving your time, dedication, and, uh, and genuine love. So we really, really need you now. He was dissolved of I Access, Jeffrey Christian Cortez, Tete I Analyst, J. Marie Caboca, my friend, Douglas Fair, the Administration Director, Pastor Alfredo Ubina, Federated President of the Thank you also for giving your support to all our learners. And as they are the need to be provided with relevant education. And relevant education is something that will make it functional in the society, productive in the society, and let them sustainable so that, uh, provide, provide sustainability to their communities. We can only say that education is very well. It is something that provides development to every person and community And of course, the third priority of the Central Agenda is improving efficiency and governance. And we would like to thank again our city government for such laudable uh, governance methodologies and approaches. Imagine this time that they employ the chief in the local state board to really ensure that no stone is left under and no second factor that is there to really oversee the implementation from the planning, the implementation of the to the heritage of our community as implementers. We should be thankful for our local government. And of course, to our partners for providing us solutions to our problems because no problem can be solved if the solution is multi sectoral. We need multi sectoral strategies in order to solve. So we would like to thank you for being there. Yes, so the challenge now is how to ensure that our education would provide access to more learners who are deprived for the longest time to access education. To provide relevant education to our willing learners who have different needs, learning styles, and intelligences. And to really ensure that they become relevant also in the society and productive citizens who contribute to the nation. So that's a challenge that I want to share with everybody. Since you have blessings this afternoon, I want you to don't, I don't say pay, you can pay back for local government children, pay it forward to our learners. Only then we can say that you are grateful, you are thankful for the blessings. If we see our children enjoying the quality services that we give to them, especially in the area of teaching and learning. But as for me, it's just one thing. And for us, it's just one thing. Let's just keep one. Before I start my speech, I want to acknowledge the presence of the Lawless Honorable Vinnie Chow, and also on some new schools, division superintendent Dr. Jonathan Estelania, and to everyone who are here. It gives me immense pleasure to be able to speak in behalf of the all volunteers and share. 
share my experiences with you today. As a volunteer, I haven't had the opportunity to teach in various settings from schools to community centers. And I have learned so much from the experience. First and foremost, being a volunteer teacher has taught me the value of patience and understanding. Every learner has their own unique set of challenges and learning styles. And it's our job as teachers to adapt their needs and provide them with the support they need. However, I also face many obstacles along the way, such as the distance of location where I teach, lack of resources, irregular attendance of all learners, and limited support from the community. An old average says, poverty is not a hindrance to education. Distinguished personalities at the presidential table, <laughs> Dr. Jonathan de la Peña, the new soul, school division superintendent, around the last the chief of the CID and Implementation Division, Chief of SCOR, fresh from Thailand, and he brought the biggest fire out there. Ten over ten. Quality teacher volunteers. 
a while ago, I chat with Sir Stan. Sir Stan, Left pastor, but we're not our managers. Of course, you underwent the rudiments of the licensure examination of teachers. Hello. So, you have to what is being recommended the Department of Education? So these teacher volunteers, you volunteer to be mentors of the out of school youth and adults. So please take care of them. Kung may ito, wala yung drop out sa ila. Okay ba? Wala yung drop out? So these 98 volunteer teachers now, this is just the beginning, step by step, for your big dreams to be with the Department of Education roster of regular teachers. A Shizmo, the local government unit, wanted to be functional and relevant in the community. We will continuously fund or approve funds for all teachers. For the benefit of the learners. That will be all again for education. Jonathan, did I bring 
our debt officials, and of course our debt family, our mobile teachers, no? and our um, volunteer teachers, to our guests, our partners, maaring hapon sa ating kanina. The USA Opportunity 2.0 program aims to provide second chance opportunities for the out of students. This is funded by the USA and it is implemented by the Education Development Center in partnership with DepEd, the Department of Education and Technical, Technical Education Skills Development Authority, both at the national and local level. The program will contribute to stronger education and workforce development systems that reach larger numbers of out-of-school youths in preparing them to transition to further education and training, as well as immediate jobs and long-term success. We are currently implementing in the 15 cities in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Opportunity 2.0 program was launched the launch was made possible with the support of our local government unit through the leadership of our city and our urban direction. Through this event, the Elegant City Youth Development Alliance was reorganized and strengthened through an executive order signed by our city mayor, who is also the chairman of the Alliance. The members of the Alliance includes the Committee on Education and the
the flyers para masaktan ninyo tayo ang program ito. We also have the program. Pwede na ito dahil si Ma'am Jen. Ma'am Jen, you can request to the LGU the two-pack para special para sa atong class. Wala, ako na, baby. Na ako yung two-pack. Pero yung bahagi ng mga sasitin ito. Worth of 4-5. LSD. And those. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Yes! Pampatay. Okay, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. As for work so that is our support to the program. Tony is always here sa ano ang kumpara and now to give us the short message of the president of Christian Horizon School, Ma'am Anita Sepuriano. A big round of applause, please.
emergency ang ato uh, mga PhD students in attendance no then ang ato uh, mga partner sa so YBA o niya ang kita sa taksa of course ang ato uh, mga chief sa DepEd una ang curriculum implementation division ni Sir Chief Brian Aron ang ato uh, chief sa NCID kang Sir Rex Raso ang ato uh, chief sa SGOD sa tanan ato mga ALS implementers na nakaroon din sa tanan ng mga community ALS implementers volunteers Walang ina ito na-recognize Pag taas sila sa likod Selected ALS learners na ito Dari sa Legal City National High School Na sa likod Ato pala prangkat Pag taas sa kapon sa Naomi No, kaya sila na minaw Sa ito ang istoryahan Kaya sila ang direct na ito Na mao'y recipient Aning na programa O sa tanan na ito Mga implementer sa ALS Again, ayong hapon Kala itong tanan As we come to close this Remarkable event The Community Alternative Learning System Implementers Conference and recognition. I would like to take this opportunity to express my sincere gratitude to all of you who took part of this convergence. A term regarding this convergence of us stakeholders and implementers. Of course, ako ang mga select learners na ako ang especially invite din sila din nino and napunta yung mga select na IP teachers sir, no? Nagkuha din na to sila naka-uniform din sila. Magpalagpaka na ako ang mga